Hello and welcome to Steve's Soft Drink Shack. I got something special to look at today. I picked this up at a little store. It's kind of obscure. Oh, excuse me. Hello? You want to go where? When? Now? All right. Change of plans, guys. We're going on a road trip. Come on. Can you believe that it's literally one week from my last video? Snow's gone down immensely. I guess that storm was the end of winter. So we're just gassing up here in South Porcupine, Ontario, where the shack is now located. Uh, we're going to be driving about three hours, uh, basically south to the city of Sudbury. So yeah, it begins. So we're driving through the big city of Timmins, Ontario. It's where I grew up. It's got a population of just around uh, 45,000. It's made up of Timmins proper here, South Porcupine, where I live now, Schumacher. Um, the main industry here is gold mining. Uh, the amount of gold that's come out of the ground in Timmins uh, dramatically dwarfs all of the gold to come out of the Yukon Gold Rush, the California Gold Rush combined. It's, it's a substantial amount of the world's like total gold supply came out of this town. Um, and, interesting fact, one of the mines here has a shaft that at the bottom is the closest point to the center of the earth uh, on Earth that you can possibly get to. There are deeper mines uh, than you can find here in South Africa, but due to their elevation uh, above the planet to begin with, uh, they're actually not as close to the center of the Earth. But a block from my place, there's a gas bar I've never actually been to. And here I find these superior meats, uh, spicy jalapeno dry pepper reds from, uh, from a place in Barrie, Ontario, which is, uh, which is about two hours drive from Sudbury where we're heading. Um, I've never had them. Let's have a look. Not really car friendly. It's got a good smoke flavor to it. I'm not getting much heat out of it, even though it's jalapeno. Um, but essentially, you know, semi-local. You know, not made in some giant factory somewhere. It's pretty good. So we're stopped here at uh, at the watershed. This is uh, a spot about halfway between uh, Timmins and Sudbury. It's pretty much the only stop on the way. So if you have to pee or you want a drink or something like that, this is pretty much your only option. And uh, and it's actually on the watershed. Everything north of here, where we came from, uh, water when it goes into the ground, it flows north towards James Bay, Hudson's Bay, goes up into the Arctic Ocean. And uh, water south of here flows south to, uh, to the Great Lakes and then towards... Um, the Atlantic. So, I wanted a drink and I found this thing. This is a giant brisk, 7-10 milliliters, half and half, half uh, iced tea, half cherry limeade, which, I mean, cherry limeade is already a half, so this is like a half and quarter quarter. But anyway, it's got this cute little alpaca double thingy uh, with like a, a mountain. It's by an artist named uh, Margaret Anderson. Uh, not carbonated, but let's have a look at it. it smells like cherry. Hmm. Tastes far more like cherry than it does lime or um, iced tea. I'm not really getting much iced tea at all. Interesting to note, 65 calories per 355 mils. That makes for a total of 130 in here. That's less than a can of Coke or a can of Pepsi. Sudbury is a really interesting town. We're driving through it right now uh, in a geographic sense. It's in the middle of a, of a huge crater called the Sudbury Basin. 
It's actually one of the biggest like impact craters from like a meteor um, on on the Earth, at least on on terrestrial land. There's some bigger ones in uh, in Africa, but this one's pretty huge. And it looks like a wasteland when you're driving through it. It's all black rocks. My parents who grew up here, they tell me that in the 60s, it was a hell of a lot darker. Now it's beautiful, there's trees everywhere. But to anyone who isn't from here, it still looks like a wasteland. And that's because this is a nickel mining town. And to get the nickel out of the, the rock that they dig up, they would uh, build these huge, huge uh, piles of lumber, because the lumber was plentiful. So that had an effect in getting rid of the trees and they would burn the rock on top of these huge piles of, of wood and that would release all sorts of horrible toxic smoke but it would also let the nickel like flow out from the rock and so that smoke destroyed a lot of the vegetation that wasn't cut down in actually building these lumber piles in the first place and so the whole city became this barren black rock crater <laughs> of a city and uh it was so unique and so powerful geographically. It was actually used to uh, train uh, astronauts for the moon missions. That's how uh, unearthly, I guess you could say, this place looked. Um, and you'll also see, I got some footage, um, of the uh, of uh, the super stack, the Inco super stack. which is just an absolutely huge smoke stack so that uh, the smoke that would come from processing the nickel ore uh, wouldn't destroy all the vegetation here and that uh, the uh, actual like gases that come from that super stack uh, have been traced as going as far as Greenland so uh, <laughs> that stacks pretty pretty interesting we did go to Sudbury uh, the reason for the trip to watch uh, Wes Anderson's new movie um, Grand Budapest Hotel we weren't getting into Timmins Timmins has one theater and they really don't get um, good films it's you know Generic Hollywood stuff, which is okay. I watched Noah the other day; it was great. But uh, but anyway, I wanted to see the Grand Budapest Hotel, so I'll review that for you. If you like Wes Anderson, you'll love the Grand Budapest Hotel. If you don't like Wes Anderson, you won't like the Grand Budapest Hotel. But it's a very very pretty movie. It mixes uh, fun. It mixes almost childlike, uh, like a kids movie sort of vibe, a kids story kind of vibe with you know very easy to define good and bad characters um, with a certain tasteful vulgarity uh, in word choices and in content. Um, you know, there's murders and stuff like that in it. It's definitely not a kid's movie, but it has the same sort of good feeling vibe to it. I really liked it. I recommend checking it out. And uh, thank you for checking out Steve Softdrink Shack and being a loyal fan. It's awesome. You guys have a good one.